Ever since I saw the Diablo 4 trailer, I was cautiously optimistic about how it might turn out. Diablo Immortal alienated many Diablo fans, and while Diablo 3 eventually was good, it just never scratched that itch like other ARPGs. And in the back of my mind, I still felt that Diablo 4 may flop. That was until I played the beta. Hands on with Diablo 4 and all of its systems, I felt that excitement again. I'll admit, whenever a new game comes out, there's a honeymoon phase, but this felt a bit different. This is what you should understand about Diablo 4. It's not trying to create any new systems. It's trying to bring together some of the better systems we've seen from the ARPG and even the MMO market. So what does that look like? Combat feels like a mix of Diablo 2 and Diablo 3 put together at a slower pace with some new additions thrown in. Skills may have different effects, such as the Barbarian Kick skill which damages and pushes enemies back. While being pushed back, if enemies hit any terrain, they take extra damage and are stunned for 3 seconds. Every skill in Diablo 4 can be ranked up to activate two different passive abilities. Once a skill is activated, these two passive abilities may potentially change how the skill works, which is similar to other games such as Lost Ark and seems close to what Diablo 3 had in the Ruin system. Take Whirlwind for example. While using this skill, you're essentially a moving cyclone dealing physical damage to everything in your path. However, once the skill is fully maxed out, you may choose to have Whirlwind inflict a bleed over time or have increased damage after spinning for a full 2 seconds. So what's different? I mean, we've seen all of this before, right? Well, we've only scratched the surface with build customization. While the Codex of Power allows you to save legendary effects and place those effects onto other items, the Codex of Power is only a fraction of the available legendary effects. And with the access to the Paragon board and the full release, you may have a recipe for a lot of choice. Especially when you consider the seasonal content for Diablo 4 is right around the corner. With every new season, you can try out a new build and it will hopefully feel like a fresh experience. Your Chain Lightning build that was meta last month with a new addition of a seasonal system such as what we saw with Diablo 3 might change your Lightning build entirely. With over 20 skills per character, the customization and replayability, especially with the additions of seasons, makes me feel like a kid again. Brainstorming while going to bed, thinking about my druid hurricane build, trying to have the biggest hurricane possible, is one of the reasons why I fell in love with Diablo in the first place. Another reason why I fell in love with Diablo was the atmosphere. When creating a new character in Diablo 2, it felt as though you were just another adventurer in a huge world, exploring an unknown, dark and gritty place for the first time. The starting area for Diablo 2 wasn't even a town. It was literally a camp which was set up because the towns were unsafe to travel to. Thankfully, in Diablo 4, Dark and Gritty makes a huge comeback. In Diablo 4, you are thrown into this mysterious world filled with unknown characters. Once cheerful and filled with joy, you are quickly shown the true nature of this world's dark environment and it feels like a true down-to-earth Diablo successor. That all sounds great, so why is anybody worried? After playing the beta, there are already a handful of concerns. The dungeons are a bit repetitive, monsters and areas scale with your level at least in Act 1, and itemization needs a bit of work but this may change. One of the things people are most worried about in Diablo 4 is that it doesn't feel like a true ARPG and it feels more like Lost Ark with its MMO aspects. In previous Diablo installments and even in games such as Path of Exile, most of the time you are grinding away by yourself. However, in Diablo 4, there's a sense of other adventurers being there. You will occasionally see other players walking around, going from place to place, and even helping you complete spontaneous world events. Unless you're in a city, this is not overwhelming, but it makes you feel like you're in a living world with other people. One of the great things I enjoyed about Lost Ark was the spontaneous activities with other players. So, yes, it won't feel as closely tied to the original single player experiences many of us had with the older Diablo games, but time will tell if the upsides of being an adventurer in a world that's filled with other adventurers will outweigh the negatives. There is, however, an even bigger elephant in the room, and that is how Diablo 4 may be monetized. After the release of Diablo Immortal, the trust Blizzard once had with its Diablo fanbase is now fractured, and rightfully so. For Diablo 4, on the other hand, there have been multiple accounts where the developers have stated, specifically, there will be no pay-to-win additions put into Diablo 4. The Diablo 4 developers have been very adamant when it comes to microtransactions, and I will give them the benefit of the doubt. 
However, we have heard similar statements from the developers who worked on Diablo Immortal, stating the exact same thing, and we all know how that turned out. One thing that did rub me the wrong way during the beta was once you reach the first town, you are instantly shown exactly where to pick up your purchased microtransactions. And immediately after that, you are shown a slide to pre-purchase Diablo 4 before June 6th in order to obtain your gifts. This felt a bit predatory, similar to how a mobile game shoves sales into the face of its players. Other than that, time will tell if the inclusion of seasonal microtransactions will make the situation any worse. After my time with the Diablo 4 beta, I am very excited to see how this game turns out. Diablo 4 seems to be taking a lot of inspiration from other popular ARPGs and MMOs, such as the open world multiplayer aspects from games like Lost Ark, seasonal content similar to what we have in Diablo 3, and hopefully on the same level as Path of Exile, while maintaining the atmosphere that came from the first two Diablo games. If you've played the Diablo 4 beta, let me know your thoughts about your experience, or if you even have any feedback about this video, leave a comment down below. I reply to every comment I get, and any feedback is welcome. So, should you be excited for Diablo 4? Well, that depends. Because as much as I enjoyed my time with the beta, there are still some things that may rub people the wrong way. Even with so many things to be excited for with some of its new MMO-like systems, Diablo 4 still may not be for you. However, I'm loving what I'm seeing, and I cannot wait for the official release. My name is Artos, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.